So, the Jaguar X-Type. Is it as bad as everyone said? Best we have a look, have a little chat about these, take one for a drive, and let's find out. Roll the credits. Hmm. Welcome to the Man Cave. Let the games begin. Right, let's have a quick look round this car. It is a 2006 Jaguar X-Type. This flavour is the 2.2 diesel sport premium manual. And yeah, we will have a close look round and a little chat. But as you can see, she's a lovely example and these are a really nice looking car. Do they deserve the wrap what they get? Well, we'll have to find out, I guess, won't we? Let's get in the car and then we'll have a little chat. So, before we go for a drive, let's have a little look round. Some of the creature comforts you get in a Jaguar X-Type. Now, there are several different models with the Jaguar X-Type. You had the S, and then you had the SE, and I think there was a base model in there as well, and then you went up full spec to a Sovereign. Now, that was in your comfort spec. Then they did the Sport spec, which this one is, and you got the Jaguar X-Type Sport, and then you got the Sport Premium, and I think there was a Sport XT as well, one which had a bit of a body kit and a spoiler. This one is a Sport Premium, now, when they're fully loaded with options, the Sport Premium is basically the same spec as a Sovereign, just in Sport trim. So this has all the equipment level of a Sovereign, um, but with Sport trim. These were aimed a lot more at the younger generation because there was no walnut, and there was no sort of beige colour leather and walnut like as in most Jags. The XJs especially had the walnut dash, their sort of beige leather trim, this is a lot more modernised in here. They've done these a lot more modern. So we have suede. Half leather, half suede seats. Not leather and cloth. These are leather and suede. These seats are also electric seats. Both front seats are fully electric. And we have other bits and pieces in here which the SE and some of the lower models never had. I mean, for a start, we had... Oh, I bet my radio's going to come on now, isn't it? There we go. We had factory. There's our... There's our climate control. We have a sat-nav as well, which is pretty basic. In today's world, that's a 2012 um, DVD-based sat-nav, so it's pretty useless, but it's in there. We have all the bits and pieces you could need. It also has power fold mirrors. We have self dip and rear view mirror. We have Jaguar voice control, which is a really nice little thing. Automatic headlights. We have Xenon headlights as well. So they're not just um, self adjusting, they're also Xenon headlights or Exxon, whatever you want to call it, the bright colored ones. This one's a six speed manual as well. So we have full equipment level in here. We have the heated seats, we have the CD changer, the single disc, we have Bluetooth telephone as well, so you can connect the phone up. Jaguar voice. Oops, there you go, I pressed it and didn't get a command. Let's see if we can see if we can do something here. Look at the temperature of the climate control. It's on 22 degrees. If I press the button, climate control, 24 degrees. Climate control, temperature 24 degrees. There you go. See, us put the climate up to 24. And that'll work on a number of things. You can control your sat-nav with voice control. You can control your heating with voice control. You can do a lot with voice control. It is very handy when you're driving along and you want to get a touch warmer. You can go take your hand off the wheel. Just thumb press the button and get your climate control to change. So you can do a lot with that. You can do a lot with that. Let's have a look outside at what the Sport Trim entails. The Sport Trim has total chrome delete. So you can see we have the mesh grills at the top and the bottom and painted grill, not chrome, where many of these 
the comfort spec models all had sort of chrome around the chrome inserts in the bumpers that had a chrome grill chrome around the doors around these were chrome but this is all black and we have the 18 inch proteus alloy wheels which are absolutely lovely and this one does have the I actually put that spoiler on myself that didn't come on the car that come off the XT model I was telling you about but yes there we go and if you think this is some low mileage example it isn't it's actually done 186,000 miles I think that's 186,000 I really don't know there she goes she's running everything works a treat Everything works a treat on this car. So we'll best get this thing for a drive and then we'll have another little chat about the Jaguar X-Type, a bit about its history and see what it actually drives like. Right, back in a minute. Right, so here we are in the Jaguar X-Type. Now, going back to the whole Ford thing, people saying this is a Mondeo in a posh frock. Well, people are trying to compare these to Mark IV Mondeos. Bad mistake, you can't do that. The Mark IV Mondeo was not even thought of when they designed this car. In fact, the Mark III Mondeo was barely thought of. You gotta remember, this car, although launched in 2001, was actually designed from about 1996, they started designing this. And what Mondeo were they making in 1996? They'd only just phased out the Mark I Mondeo. And the Mark I and the Mark II Mondeo were basically the same car with different headlights. So you've got to compare this to a Mark I or Mark II Mondeo. There is no comparison. There is no comparison between this and any Mondeo, if I'm perfectly honest. I've worked in the motor trade most of my life. And no Mondeo drives or is anything like these at all. I mean, the interior in this is sumptuous. Build quality, is it brilliant? I personally don't find the fixtures and fittings too bad. The only thing I do let the side down a little bit is the center armrest. A bit loose and a bit wobbly, so that can be a bit annoying. But when you're driving, you never hear it, and it's it just don't feel that quality, the center armrest. But the rest of it, it feels lovely. Nice cushioned dash, there's no hard plastics. These are nice soft dashes. No squeaks, no rattles. I mean, we're on a country track here in broad north, in, yeah, mid Norfolk. And trust me, this is not a smooth road. This is quite a bumpy track. Single file, as you can see, we're doing 35 miles an hour. And nothing's shaking, nothing's rattling, nothing's groaning. She's holding together really well. And like I said, this car has done 180 odd thousand miles or something like that. I'm not sure exactly how many miles this one's done, but it's done quite a few. Now, I'm probably the wrong person to ask about Jaguars because I'm very biased to Jaguars. I've had several over the years. I've had all the Jaguars from a Series 1 XJ6 to a XJ40 to an X300 to an X350 XJ6. So I've had most of the XJ6s that there are, apart from the really, the latest one, I haven't had one of them, but I've had all the sort of traditional XJ6s. I've had an S-Type, I've had a two S-Types actually, both three litre diesels. Oh, my lovely clean car's now gonna get dirty, look. There we go. So we're back on the main road. We can have a proper chat now. There we go. This 2.2 engine is really, really talky. I mean, it's pulling. I'm not even giving this car beans. We've already got up to 60 miles an hour. So we can drop her into sixth gear. We're at 55 miles an hour, we're doing 1,300 RPM. So this is an engine you don't have to work very hard. You don't, all the power is in the bottom end. So much torque due to our variable vane turbo that the two litre diesel didn't have. They did these on a two litre diesel and a 2.2. The two litre diesels were either five speed manual or an automatic. All the 2.2 litre manuals were six speed. So if you're ever unsure which engine it is, if it's six speed, it's 
five speed it's two litre but the difference between the 2.2 and the two litre diesel is day and night day and night for performance for quietness for smoothness and for reliability the two litres were very well very renowned for having reliability issues um, due to failing turbos EGR valves fuel injectors but to be honest with you that can be the same in any 10 15 year old diesel whether it be Volkswagen Audi anything German anything can all have diesel injector problems so these problems what these diesels have it's not just narrowed down to Jaguar these are not Jaguar engines these are actually Ford's Duratec engine this has got say Duratec 2.2 So yes, going back to the Mondeo, you can't compare this to a Mark II Mondeo. They launched this car, it says in 2001 they launched these, but they developed them from about 96 onwards. Yes, they'd just been bought over by Ford, so Jaguar had just been bought by Ford. But let's face it, before they were owned by Ford, they were owned by British Leyland. That's even more worrying. So what would you rather have, British Leyland or Ford? All Ford really did, they left the Jaguar designers to carry on their business. They basically left Jaguar to do what they did, which is make good cars. All Ford did was inject a whole pile of cash to bring the company more modern, to bring their cars a bit more modern, so Jaguar could advance in technologies. I mean, with an XJ40, a touchscreen would have been unheard of. I mean, it's thanks to Ford and their huge injection of money where Jaguar could afford to progress and actually bring out this new, you know, this new breed of cars, so to speak, to knock off that old British Leyland, you know, image what they had. The bad electrics, the bad build quality, built out of two tons of pig iron. I mean, you have the days of the Series 1, 2 and 3, which, yes, they are great cars. But, I mean, the, ori the origins to their engines, you know, them old XK six-cylinder engines, goes back donkey's years to, like, basically the 40s or 50s. So, when they go on to the series of AJ engines, or these Duratec diesel engines, then, yeah, they really move things up a bit. For a start, Mark 1 Mondeo still had the old Endura D engine, I think it was. These never adopted that. These adopted the very latest Ford Duratec diesel engines. But the diesel model of the X-Type didn't come out until a couple of years after launch. The first ones were all either 2 litre or 2.5 petrol. 2.1 petrol if you want to be exact. But they call it the 2 litre petrol and the 2.5 petrol. And then in about 52 they bought out the diesel and the three litre. All the petrol models were four wheel drive apart from the two litres and all the diesels were front wheel drive only. Road holding of this, wow! I've got cruise control set at 60 and we're going through some nice windy bits here and this car is dead still. There is no body roll, it handles phenomenally, absolutely phenomenally. I used to have a BMW 320 Sport, which was a 320 diesel Sport. That also used to handle well, and that was a saloon. But I can honestly say, this Jag goes as well as that BMW and handles as well as that BMW. In fact, it probably handles better. There's no skip on this. There's no body roll. Of course, it's the Sport model with the 18-inch wheels, the 40 profile tyres. It just grips and grips and grips. It really does hold on. And yes, this has got a detachable tow bar as well, and I have actually towed my caravan with it a few times. My caravan's not a small caravan. It's a 1.8 ton twin axle Elders Crusader. So it's a big caravan. This pulls it, doesn't even know it's here. Oh, do you know I'm getting hot? I turned that climate control up at the beginning of this video, didn't I? Let's knock it back down again. Climate control, 20 degrees. Climate control, temperature 20 degrees. Thank you. So there we go. I'm not quite so hot now. This is a lot better. 
The climate control system on these is phenomenal. If it's working great, and if it's working fine, it's brilliant. It's one of them systems where you can leave your temperature set at one temperature all year, and it'll sort itself out. So in the winter, it'll constantly blow warm to keep you at 20 degrees. In the summer, it'll blow cold to keep you again as close to 20 degrees as you can get it. So the air conditioning and climate control in these is phenomenal. Like I say, it's road hauling, absolutely brilliant. Absolutely brilliant, no road noise. Back into six gear, 60 miles an hour. Yeah, effortless. But so I am biased to Jaguars because I've had a lot of them and I do like Jaguars. I was always, myself, I was always a bit dubious about buying an X-Type. Because I'd heard the horror stories, believe me. I mean, I'd driven XJ6s for years. And the S-Type, to be honest with you, the S-Type was my least favourite of all the Jaguars I've had. Two S-Types. I didn't like either of them. I didn't find the... I didn't find the build nowhere near as good. They didn't seem so hard wearing inside. The interior plastics didn't feel quite so quality. So out of all the Jags I've had, the S-Type hasn't been my favourite, I will be perfectly honest with you. <coughs> Excuse me. Yes, they're lovely cars to drive. They're like a BMW 5 Series. Very quiet, very smooth. But the two models I had in particular... But they were early models, whether they changed them in the later years, I don't know. But a lot of mine had scratches around the buttons and worn steering wheels. And, you know, and that wasn't a particular high mileage car. That was a 70,000 mile car. So it's not as if that had been to the moon and back. And it wasn't until I actually see this one advertised, and I wanted another car, and I thought, ugh. Do I even drive an X-Type? I don't want to be disappointed. That was the thing. I was so loyal to the Jaguar brand. I'd never even driven an X-Type because I too had heard all the slurs about, oh, they're Mondeos, oh, they're rubbish. They're just fancy Mondeos. They, they drive and behave like a Ford. It weren't till I see this one and there was something about this particular car I see advertised. I just see this one advertised, I love the colour, I love the way it looked with the big wheels, I love the interior pictures with the carbon fibre effect dashboard, the leather suede seats, there was just something about this particular car, I thought, do you know, I really like the look of that car, it just looked such a modern Jaguar for one of its age, I mean it's 2006, this is 2021 now. So this car is 16 years old. So I took a chance. I took a chance. I rang the guy and I said to him, seen the Jaguar X-Type, can I come have a look? Yes, he says, of course you can. So I came and had a look and I went, he was a, he was a dealer and I went to his car yard, opened the door, sat in the car. See the spec of this thing because I had heard of some of the rarer X-Types had really high specs, had Alpine speaker systems with factory built subwoofers in the back, the, you know, the cruise control, which is pretty standard, but the Bluetooth phone, the Exxon headlights, the full electric seats, the voice control, these are all quite sort of, quite rare options. And to get a car that has all of them is still, it's quite rare. I mean, somebody who ever bought this car brand new ticked all the boxes on the options because I don't think there's a single option this hasn't got. I mean, it's got front parking sensors as well as rear ones, which is very rare because most of them just had rear sensors. Anyhow, I sat in this car, shut the door, and I hadn't even started the engine, and I fell at home. I thought, do you know, this feels so Jaguar. This bezel around here harks back to the... Again, it harks back to the, you know, the early days. The early days of the XJs had this same arc around the top. This was quintessentially Jaguar. And I thought, do you know, these seats are a hundred times more comfy than a Ford. The equipment level in here is, well, 
Normandale of the time could compete with equipment like this, especially touch screens. And I thought if it drives as good as it look, I'm having it. So I started it up and I took it out for a drive. And I think after 300 yards, before I'd, before I'd even got off the industrial estate, I decided, yeah, I want this car, this is the car for me. That was three years ago, so I've had this car quite a while now, and covered 30, 40,000 miles in it. It's been no problem. The only thing I've had to do to this, engine-wise, is replace the power steering pump, because my power steering pump went noisy. So I did replace the power steering pump. The previous owner before me in the service history, he had put a clutch and a flywheel on this as well, because that's dual mass on here. He had replaced the dual match clutch and flywheel, so they'd been done. But apart from that, and servicing, this car's pretty much had nothing. Yes, in the three years I've had it, I'm on my... Uh, many, no, 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 I'm still on the... I put one set of tyres on it when I first bought it, and I've still got 5mm tread on them. So, I'm not hungry on tyres, or this particular model isn't. I've replaced the front and rear brake discs and pads and some rear bushes in the rear shock absorber. You know, the bottom bushes in the rear shocks. That's all I've had to do to this car for three years. It's got no rot on it. That is another thing. These cars did suffer a lot with rotten sills and rotten rear subframes and rear spring mounts. Luckily, the guy who bought this car new, because I'm only the third owner of this car, the guy who bought this new, he was really fussy with it. And that's why this is all original. If you've seen around the outside of this car, it's all original paint. It's never been accent damaged. It's never had paintwork done. This is all factory paintwork. And he really looked after this car because there isn't one ding, there isn't one scratch on it. Even on the bumper and being an estate car, it's very unusual to find a really clean estate car because most of them were just abused. But no, this guy had really looked after this and he'd gone to the trouble to actually have all the sills injected with a wax oil to protect them because he'd heard about the horror stories and he didn't want this car rusted as it got older. So he had it all protected and that's paying dividends now because at 16 years old there's never even been an advisory for rust on this motor for its MOT. So this one is a totally rot free example. So I don't know what else to say there is about it really. Was I upset? Was I disappointed? Was I put off the Jaguar brand by the X-Type? No, I wasn't. I can see nothing wrong with the X-Type. I, I really can't. People who compare them to Mondeos. I'll tell you what these people are. It's either people who have bought a really cheap one of these, you know, for very little money. So they basically bought a dog, drove it, it's been bad to drive, it's been trouble, and they thought, oh my god, that are rubbish. No, you just bought a rubbish car in the first place. If you drive a really, really nice, looked after example like this, and I keep going on about the mileage of this car, let me look what the mileage is, 167,000, sorry. So don't go thinking, oh, he's saying that because he's got a 30,000 mile car. No, I haven't. I've got a 167,000 mile car, but it's been looked after properly. This is the key part. A lot of people who do home mechanics on these, they'll fit front suspension components like bottom wishbones, ball joints, rear brake, um, you know, rear suspension components. People will buy them for Mondeos. Yes, they will fit on the Jaguar. Don't get me wrong, you can put a Mondeo front wishbone on an X-Type and it will fit and it will fit with ease but the thing you don't realise is that Mondeo wishbone is 4mm shorter than the Jaguar one now we're only looking 4mm but times that for two by putting both on you've then narrowed the track up by 8mm that knocks the steering geometry out it'll start cutting tyres out it won't handle as good it won't drive as good it will feel more like a Ford because the geometry is set up as a Ford. This is what you've got to look out for. You've got to get one that's been maintained correctly. 
and had the correct parts fitted. I'm not saying go to Jaguar and get genuine parts for everything, because that can be expensive, and a lot of the time, because these cars are of such low value, buying genuine parts for them often isn't viable, I understand that. But buy a good quality pattern part from probably a Jaguar Special, because they will sell the correct part for that motor. They won't go and sell you a bottom arm for a Mondeo. Although, yes, they'll fit, but like I say, it's not right. It's same with some of the rear suspension components. I think the brake discs, they are the same as a Mondeo, so you can get your front brake discs for a Mondeo and be no problem. There we go. And we're out on the dual carriageway. But I say, get a good example. And you won't be disappointed. Let's get up to motorway speed here. There we go. 70 miles an hour, 1750 RPM, cruise control on, and if we do our little, let's have a little reset of our trip computer to see what mile per gallon we're doing. 57.5 miles per gallon. That's 70 miles an hour on a motorway. There you go. 57 miles to the gallon. Now that is just motorway cruising. I mainly do relatively short runs on here. My commute to work is about 40 miles. Um, but the rest of the time it's just dodging from my house to my family's house. So I class myself as doing sort of, you know, just running around miles, and this average is 42 miles to the gallon. This model, this particular car, is quite fussy on diesel. I will tell you that now. When we had the fuel crisis the other week, the only fuel what was available to me was Asda. And I had to put Asda diesel in this. For about two weeks because all the other garages were basically didn't have any fuel left and this car hated as the diesel when you start it cold it would smoke there would be slight misfires it would run lumpy the performance was down the economy dropped from my average 42 down to 35 and i thought oh that's just got winter's coming the cold weather's coming I didn't really associate it with the diesel, although I had a sneaky feeling it was something to do with it. And I couldn't wait, absolutely couldn't wait, until my normal garage, my SO garage was back open and I could get my normal premium SO diesel. So I ran that Asta stuff down until I was on the red, and then I filled it right to the top with the premium SO diesel there, ultimate power, whatever it is. And within 20 miles, this car had quietened down, smoothed out, the economy was back up to 42 miles to the gallon, and I had no lumpy running, no smoking on cold start. So on a good quality diesel, this car's fantastic. It does not like Asda diesel, Tesco diesel. Haven't tried Sainsbury's or Morrison diesel, but Asda and Tesco's, it doesn't like. But there is, you know, I think there's a reason to that, but we aren't going to get into fuels, no, that's not what this video is about. People say the fuel's no different. Yeah, it is different. It's very different. Supermarket fuels, in case you didn't know, they have already been rejected by Shell, Esso and VP, because they've already failed their quality control. So then the bulk carriers then sell that stuff on the supermarkets. Now that's a little trade secret, not a lot of people know, but supermarket fuels have all been rejected for not quite being up to spec. It's within spec to sell, but it's not within the spec what the big companies demand. So that's why supermarket fuels are a bit cheaper because it's stuff that has been rejected by the big companies who then add their own additive to it. It is very different, but we're getting off the subject. We're talking about X-Types. 
You're probably sick of hearing me talking about these now, so I'm going to end this video. But I just want you to know that these are good cars, so don't ever be frightened to buy a Jaguar X-Type. Because they are lovely. The ride on this, being the Sport, is a tad harsh. I wouldn't say it's, it's no harsher than the BMW Sport. In fact, it's probably a bit more comfortable than the BMW Sport, but these don't cosset and smooth out the bumps like a Jaguar XJ or an X-Type, because they just won't do that. But apart from that, I mean, I don't find it at all uncomfortable. I find this car really, really comfortable. Really comfortable. So I'm going to go, if you wanted to see another review on a Jaguar, I will drop it on the end card, I will put a, I'll put the end card in as the um, video for the review of my Jaguar XK8, I've also done a quick review on that, not quite as in depth as this, but still a quick review, and a drive, so if you want to see what another 90s Jaguar is, a 1999, Jaguar XK8. Click on that at the end. Like and subscribe. I don't just do car reviews. In fact, I don't very often do car reviews. I normally do fixing, restoring, um, old stationary engines, machines, lawnmowers, ride on lawnmowers, service and repairs. All them kinds of things is what my channel normally does. So, yep, if you like the video, like it, subscribe. There will be plenty more content to come. Go to my channel's homepage. You can look through the playlists and everything's listed in there or you can just scroll through the general videos. So yeah, we'll leave it here and I will see you guys. Well, I'm going to go up here next time. Right. Bye bye. Oh no! <laughs>